Hi there, thanks for watching today. In this video, you will learn about the role of cities in addressing climate change. Let me first tell you about the international context of climate change before going into the specific role of cities. First of all, climate change is a global problem and therefore is tackled through collaborative state action in the United Nations, specifically under the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change. This new negotiation process started already in 1992, but has been developing rather slowly as states have been hesitant to commit to ambitious targets to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. In December 2015, nation states adopted the Paris Agreement at the 21st Conference of the Parties to the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change. This agreement represents a new chapter in state efforts to tackle global warming. For the first time in history, states have agreed to not just limit global warming to a maximum of 2 degrees above pre-industrial levels, they have become more ambitious by agreeing to limit temperature rise to well below 2 degrees and to pursue efforts to limit global warming to uh, 1.5 degrees above pre-industrial levels. But despite this agreement, nation states are thus far not doing enough and not promising enough to effectively mitigate climate change. According to an assessment done by Climate Action Tracker, National mitigation pledges associated with the Paris Agreement will result in 2.7 degrees global warming through the effects of severe drought, sea level rise, extreme weather events. Such temperature rise will have a massive impact on our local communities. So given this action gap, other actors than our national governments have stepped up to take action themselves to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. Called mitigation action, and to prepare to the effects of climate change as well, which is called adaptation action. Cities are amongst the key actors that have stepped up in this fight against climate change. Action by cities also makes sense, as cities account for a major share of the world's emissions. The urban built environment and car traffic between urban centers and the suburbs are both important contributors of high emission shares by cities. This share is further enhanced by emissions from the many industries or even airports located in the metropolitan region. But luckily, many cities have started to develop mitigation and adaptation strategies to climate change. And adaptation measures can also go in tandem with mitigation strategies. For instance, more green parks and green roofs are beneficial for stormwater management to reduce the risks of flooding which is about adaptation. But more green parks and green roofs can also contribute to the reduction of greenhouse gas emissions, which is again about the mitigation of climate change. Another example of how cities promote mitigation measures is by bike sharing schemes to reduce car usage. Big cities such as Paris are actively endorsing such schemes. In taking climate action, cities are moving away from top-down policymaking, where cities execute policies set by the national government and impose rules on their citizens. Instead, there is a move towards a governance approach to climate change, in which power is no longer centralized around the national government. This shift towards governance allows for more policy action taken on a city level and for more collaboration between authorities on the one hand and non-state actors on the other hand in efforts to address climate change. We see partnerships between the city government and companies, for instance, in terms of generating and distributing renewable energy in a city. We see citizen participation in urban climate governance. And we see best practice learning between governments uh, from cities in uh, actual city networks. For example, the city of Malmö in Sweden is a frontrunner when it comes to finding innovative solutions to tackle climate change. It has become an eco-city. Governance as opposed to government has been a crucial strategy in achieving this aim. The city government did not just impose eco-city measures, but collaborated with private actors and local communities to make it happen. 
The local community was, for instance, actively involved through climate smart food centers and community gardens. Solar panels were placed at buildings and schools to make means for renewable energy highly visible to the community and to provide the city of Malmö with a real identity of an eco-city. Another key climate governance strategy is for cities to engage in international collaboration in transnational city networks. In these networks, cities from different countries exchange knowledge and share best practices about urban climate governance. This, these city networks also take on a broader advocacy role to influence the state no negotiations under the United Nations Climate Convention. They, for instance, have put additional pressure on uh, state governments to agree on ambitious mitigation targets under the UN Climate Convention by showing that cities actually can do it and actually do take action. C40 is amongst the best known and high profile city networks on climate change. It involves big capitals, such as New York and London. Therefore, this network is key to facilitate dialogue between major cities. This network shares best practices on a range of issues, including transportation, energy, and climate risk. Another example of a well-known city network is called ICLE, Local Governments for Sustainability. It has over 1,000 members and is present in many parts of the world. This network has a very active secretariat which helps local governments to improve their sustainability performance. It, for instance, offers a free online self-assessment tool to help local governments evaluate their progress towards urban sustainable development, including actions on renewable energy and, renew uh, and more sustainable transport. A third example is the Asian Cities Climate Change Resilience Network. This network is specialized on adaptation. Participating cities exchange experiences about uh, urban adaptation governance to learn from one another and in that manner um, try to improve their adaptation planning, for instance on disaster prevention and post-disaster relief. Will cities be successful in our struggle against climate change? Cities at least collaborate more effectively to address climate change when compared to our national governments and have become the center stage for pragmatic and innovative action to realize a resilient and low-carbon economy. So what action, climate actions are being done in your city? <laughs>